Welcome to the RPG Players Guild. My name is Gordon Jackson, and we're going to be talking about races today. The app I'm going to be using here um, throughout this series of videos is the 5e character app put out by Dungeon Developer, available at the uh, Google Play Store. This app is really good. It has every class, every race, every background, and all the feats that are available in Dungeons & Dragons 5e. You can manage sources when you first get it and download every source book that's in the game so that you have access to all of it in one spot. If your dungeon master just wants to play through the player's handbook, you can select player's handbook only and you're only going to be looking at races for the player's handbook. Same thing with classes, you're only going to be looking at classes that are available in the standard edition. If your DM wants to uh, play Eberron's Rising from the Last War and that's the campaign you're going to be playing and that's where all of your adventures are going to be at, you can come in and all you're going to find is the stuff that's available through that source book. Um, very good app. So let's get started. And then let's talk Aarakocra. So sequestered in high mountains atop tall trees, the Aarakocra, sometimes called bird folk, evoke fear and wonder. Many Aarakocra aren't even native to the material plane. They hail from a world beyond, from the boundless vistas of the elemental plane of air. Um, <clears throat> when I read, looking at some of these exotic races and you read the flavor text, um, this is the stuff that's known right now. So we have, you know, where we're at in the Forgotten Realms and what we know currently. But this is pretty limited. It doesn't really talk about Aarakocra society and all the things that we as players can do. And this is definitely when you're playing these exotic races, wanting to sit down with your DM and really talking to your DM about it and trying to work out that. This gives your DM an opportunity if in their world they've already allowed Air Cocker players before and they've they've already had a little bit of thought. Maybe they have never had an Air Cocker character in their in their world and this gives them that opportunity to build a whole society in some area so that they can work with your backstory. There's all kinds of things that you can do with it. So let's check out Air Cocker stats to see what what we get if we become an Aarakocra or are an Aarakocra. You get a plus two in Dex and a plus one in Wisdom. If you're using Tasha's Cauldron of Everything's optional rules, you can take the plus two and the plus one and you can place them anywhere you'd like as long as you don't raise a stat above 20 and you can't stack them on the same stat. So if you wanted to be a wizard and you wanted to put plus two in Intelligence, you'd have to put the plus one somewhere else. Now you could put it back in Dex or you could put, leave it in Wisdom. But as long as you're not going over 20 and as long as you're not stacking them up, this gives you the ability as a player to customize how you want to play your Aarakocra. Um, size, you're going to be medium. Speed, 25. That's kind of in the middle. If you look at the standard races that are out there, dwarves, gnomes, halflings, they're at 20. Um, humans, elves, half-elves, orcs, they're at 30. So we're kind of right there in the middle. The thing here that you're really going to have to talk to your DM about is whether or not they will allow an air cocker in their campaign because of the flying speed. And I'll talk about, I, I don't see as a DM and a player having the flying speed, yes, that, that gives some opportunities, but it's not, hey, they can fly and they're in, indestructible, they're invincible. It doesn't change that that aspect of the game it's just that you have a flying speed of 50 is that an advantage yes but sometimes that might be at a disadvantage so um depending on your you gotta not look at your dm as being the antagonist where they're gonna try and mess you over just because you can fly but there are some bad things that can happen to you when you can fly all right and we'll talk more about the flying speed age air cocker mature at three and compared to humans, air cocker don't usually live longer than 30 years, so they have a fairly short lifespan. Alignment. Most air cocker are good and rarely choose sides when it comes to law and chaos. Tribal leaders and warriors might be lawful, while explorers and adventurers might tend towards chaotic. As a player character, or if your DM has really kind of expanded and made a whole air cocker society, um, you're going to run into any kind of an alignment. As a player, you're going to play your character to the alignment that you want to play them and just make sure you play into that alignment. So if you want to be chaotic evil or lawful evil or chaotic good or lawful good or wherever you want to play, um, you just play your character to that to that alignment. Size, Eric Cocker about five feet tall. So on an average, about five feet tall. I've done a lot of research on Eric Cocker and you know, looking at between five and a half. And I think 
as we'll go through some of the air cockra, if you're what species you are, this number may be higher and this number may be lower. Your average weight's going to be somewhere between about 80 and 100 pounds. Um, it's kind of like humans, you know, your average weight is going to be 160 and look around on the street. You're going to see people that are from 100 to 400 pounds. So just depending, it, this is where you'll have to work with your DM. But regardless, your size is going to be medium. Flight, you have a flight speed of 50 and the re, the uh, <clears throat> to use this speed, you can't be wearing medium or heavy armor. So no medium or heavy armor. You can use a shield. <clears throat> But that is going to uh, take up one of your uh, hands when you're flying. So if you're using a missile weapon, you'll have to uh, either... And you've got wings, so, you know, it could be a problem holding it behind you. It could interfere with stuff. So that's a dynamic and a mechanic you'll have to work out with your DM. But you could wear a shield because shields aren't considered medium or heavy armor. Talons. Your talons are natural weapons, which you can use to make unarmed strikes. If you hit with them... You deal slashing damage equal to one die four plus your strength modifier instead of the bludgeoning damage normally for unarmed strikes. Language, you can speak, read, and write common, air cockra, and aran. Now, this last one here is an exotic language. And what it is is it's part of the primordial language. Let's check this out real quick here. Do I got it? Let's see if I can find the right one. I looked it up just for you guys. Um, this language is the language of the elemental plane of air. So, air cockra, this all came from the elemental plane of air. So, their language there, this was their primary language. The cool thing about this language is that it was considered a dialect of primordial so that creatures who spoke one of the other elemental dialects, such as Ogwen, Ignan, or Terran, could understand Aran and vice versa. So, if you're running into somebody who speaks those other languages this one language gives you access to really kind of four plus azedo and madani were derived from r and so you may not be able to fully understand it but this one language could give you some options now once again if you're using tasha's cauldron of everything's optional rules for character development you could swap out that language with your dm this is once again talking to your dm about Languages, you could swap that out for something that may be more appropriate for your game setting. Now, when we talk about Arakakra society, if you look at the image here, I'll go back to lore. If you look at that image, and this is the only thing that you look at, this is kind of the idea of, you know, what your character is going to look like. One of the things that I like to do whenever I'm starting a new character is I like to get, I have a basic concept or an idea, and then I like to go get inspiration by coming out and checking out different images. So I can try and find something that more represents my idea of what my character should be. So this is what we're gonna be looking at as, as a normal Arakakra, based off of the image that's in the book, where we still have an eagle here, but this eagle right here looks a little bit cooler than that one right there. This one looks a little bit more humanoid, like what we would see as opposed to this one definitely looks a little more definitely definitely a bird right let's check out uh, this one right here now this gives you that idea with the bonuses that you have that you're looking more towards the martial class but when you look at this right here this draws up a whole new set of images is this Arakaka getting ready to cast some spell or throw something at you or are they that monk it could be argued that they are the monk. It looks like this right here might be uh, some brass knuckles. Maybe they're that monk bird or they're, or are they that uh, spellcaster and they're getting ready to uh, snap something off at you. Here's another good one. The thing I like about, uh, let's look at this one here. I found some other ones that were in the cardinal range. I think they were down a little bit more like this one right here. It's a very good picture. Give you a pretty good idea. That definitely, to me, looks like it's more in the cleric or the the sorcerer, the wizard range. Let's look at one more here. Let's check out uh, that. Definitely looks like that ranger 
sitting up on the thing or maybe that rogue sitting up there trying to uh, snap something off now the th if your if your dm has already has an idea about eric cocker and maybe they've already played eric cocker and have eric cocker in their world they may already have some backstory for like where the eric cocker are from maybe there's some island off of the coast and that's where all the eric cocker live or maybe it's in some high mountains that are on their main the main continent but thinking about like how does the society work so we know that air cocker came from the prime from the elemental plane of air so like on the elemental plane of air was it a caste system and maybe a ragtag fugitive group my Battlestar Galactica reference here decided that they didn't want to be in that caste system and they they traversed the planes and ended up on this material plane and started a whole new society. Or maybe vice versa. Maybe in the elemental plane of air, there was no caste system. If you're an air cocker, you're an air cocker. Maybe they wanted to be more of a caste system. So the area that you came from is kind of represented like this, where if you were born and you are this race of, of air cocker or this species of air cocker, you're looking at you were an assassin or maybe you're more towards those lines maybe you were born here and you decided that you wanted to be a bard and you broke that mold and by breaking that mold and not following the caste system in your society they they kicked you out and that's why you're out adventuring because you can't go back home and that can create a whole bunch of, of stories and hooks for your dm where Maybe you run into another air cocker. Maybe you run into an air cocker that's from the society and they have this cast, cast group and they look at you and they know that you've been ostracized and kicked out of their society and how they treat you. Or maybe your society is wide open and you can do whatever you want and there's very few people that ever have access to the air cocker nation and to go to their main city. But your party has an air cocker in it and maybe you need to get something there and it gives you that ability to get into that society. There's a lot of different things that you can do and a lot of different players or characters that you can play here. Not just based off of the image that we get in the book. I really like this race. Now let's talk about flying because I know that a lot of DMs and I know that there are some games like the Adventurers League, and I'm not sure if they still do, but it used to not let you play an air cocker because of flying speed. Because think about it. If you can fly and you're out in the open, then yes, it does give you an advantage. You can scout for the group. Now, it's obviously easier to scout if you've got some more open terrain, if you're in the plains or in the desert. You're definitely, it's definitely going to be hard to sneak up on your group. Now, I would argue that if your group was out in those terrains that you should probably have some kind of scouting going on or if you've got that wizard that's got his or her familiar flying up in the air that's giving you forewarning so that you don't get surprised by that group of bandits, there are other ways to get around that. Flying in itself is not an unusual thing in D&D. If your DM's goal is to eliminate flying from the game, then they're going to have a lot of stuff that they're going to have to do. Um, we have flying spells. There are different classes at different levels that will give you um, the ability to change shape into something that can fly. The casters that have the ability to polymorph can, can get into flying. There's a spell, fly. So there are ways to, there are ways to fly in the game. So if, if the whole deal is, is that, hey, it's going to break the game if I allow somebody to be able to fly, then there's a lot of different ways people are going to be able to break that game. So it's part of the deal. Flying is not the end all, the end all. If you're shot at height or if somebody puts um, a spell on you that puts you in a paralysis state, um, and you fall from 100 feet. Um, there's a word for that. It's a four-letter word with an E-D at the end of it, but, but it's bad. <laughs> so it's not the end of the world if somebody in your party can fly because it's something that you're going to have to address sooner or later. Things can fly. That's just the way it works. Um, I actually think that, you know, while that may give you some benefit when you're out in the open, maybe that's one of the reasons why your group really wants you in the group is because when they're traveling, 
um, it does give them a slight advantage. Although if you're in an area that has a lot of cover and you're in a, in a heavily wooded area, they may not, that flight may not be able to help you and they may be away from your party when your party does get jumped by the bandits and by the time they get there, it's all over. So it's not necessarily, you know, going to break your game. But what about when you're in, if your campaigns are, are heavily dungeon or heavily cave or heavily indoors or you're in cities a lot and you're doing that where the flight could be a disadvantage or at least not an advantage. So there are, from a, from a player and a DM's perspective, I really don't have any problem with flying. I can see a lot of cool things about it, but, I, but there are downsides. I, mean, I, I really like this race. I think there's a lot of stuff that we could do about it, but I know that as a, as a DM and an, as a player, that if I had Air Cockra in my campaign, I'd really want to explore the whole culture. One of the things I find with D&D when they talk about races is it's, they talk about humans having this very diverse thing, but when you talk about dwarves, it's, you know, where do dwarves get food? <laughs> Where do, there has, has to be people that are in those societies, trying to make a whole society as opposed to just going, hey, everybody that you, every air cocker you see has got a staff in their hand, it's got a, they got a spear in their hand. They're, they have a very diverse culture. And if you're gonna create if, and allow air cocker in the game, having that very diverse culture can really open up a lot of stuff for the game. And it gives the player and the DM opportunities to explore that more and get the group involved and I, I can see a lot of, of cool things if you allow Eric Cocker in the game but this is a, a really cool race all right thanks for watching if you like the videos hit like if you like the channel hit subscribe I always appreciate it you can hit the uh, notification bell and you'll get notifications when new videos come out and I'll keep producing content thanks for watching